Hello, 9th standard, CBC children, have a good day, have a nice day. Today, we are going to do video number 4 and continuation of the lesson, chapter 5, the fundamental unit of life. Okay, we may get uh, two more videos because it is a lengthy chapter and then as I said, in 9th standard, you have to go in detail, that is why. The lesson in our textbook for every cell organel it is given just one paragraph. But you need to know additional information. Okay. So this is video number 4, chapter 5, the fundamental unit of life, part 4. Okay. And so far <coughs> we have learned what initially cell is the basic unit of life. Cell theory stated by three scientists, uh, Schleiden and Swan and Rudolf Winsor. And cell theory states that cells are the structural and functional unit of life. And uh, cell is the basic unit of life. And cells are existing from pre existing sorry, cells are arising from pre-existing cells. These are the three points for cell theory theory. Okay. And then we have learned about discovery of theory in the first video session. And then we learned prokaryote and eukaryotic cell. Then followed by that is the cell membrane function structure and functions of cell membrane. But cell membrane is also known as plasma lemma or plasma membrane. And their function is mainly to transport the molecules from in and out of the cell. And based on that, we have learnt three technical terms, hypertonic, hypotonic and isotonic solution. I hope you understand. And then we have learnt three physical phenomena as Imbibition, diffusion and osmosis. Imbibition, as I said, it can be clearly seen, seen in soaked seeds. Soaked seeds, na, when the seeds are swollen, that's imbibition. And then, uh, <coughs> diffusion, it is the movement of molecules from the region of higher concentration to the lower concentration and uh, uh, exchange of gases as oxygen and carbon dioxide during respiration and photosynthesis so during respiration is done by a simple process diffusion. I hope you could recollect all these points. Hmm? Osmosis is the movement of molecules from the region of higher concentration to the lower concentration through semi-permeable membrane. And then as I already said, if please remember, we say in our textbook it is given as higher concentration to lower concentration. But actually that textbook explanation with reference to high energy level. But normally based on the concentration, osmosis is between from the lower concentration to higher concentration through semi-permeable membrane. I hope you understand. Hmm? So this is the three physical phenomena where cell membrane is doing the function moving the molecules in and out of the cell. I hope you understand this. Hmm? Then yesterday in video 3 we have learnt another the structure of cell membrane as such and then cell wall plasmodesmata in between the two cells plasmodesmata and cell wall it is the characteristic feature of plant cell where it is formed of outer primary cell wall middle middle lamella and innermost thickest secondary cell wall and the secondary cell wall it is with the Secondary cell wall, it is with the thickening of cellulose and lignin. I hope you remember all this. Huh? 
and then we have learnt endoplasmic reticulum structure and functions of endoplasmic reticulum and this endoplasmic reticulum when it is with the ribosome it is known as rough endoplasmic reticulum and without a ribosome smooth endoplasmic reticulum and functions we have seen i hope you understand hmm? and today in video 4 we are going to continue three cell organelles if time permit one more as golgi body lysosome and mitochondria golgi body lysosome and mitochondria what do you understand last year we have learned this lesson can you recollect something hmm? now this golgi body it is identified by the scientist camillo golgi Golgi body is identified by the scientist Camillo Golgi. Okay. And this Golgi body in plant cell, it is called dictyosome. And normally Golgi body, it is also known as Golgi complex and Golgi apparatus. So Golgi complex or Golgi body or Golgi apparatus are all one and the same and in plant cell it is known as dictyosome okay? it is known as dictyosome in plant cell see the spelling dictyosome i hope you understand hmm? now this plant cell, sorry golgi body it is a system of membrane bound vesicle as normally we draw structure like this. This is a flattened set. Okay. And then here and there we find vesicles. Okay. Now this flattened set, it is called a sister name. Are you clear? Hmm? So I say Golgi body is a system of membrane bound vesicle and it is formed by flattened sac. <coughs> flattened here it is raw shape and both the cell it is globular in nature and that is known as cisterne. Okay and it is also having some vesicles. In the globular structure it is called vesicles. Okay. And normally this Golgi body is in the synthesized material by endoplasmic reticulum. They are forming a packed structure and passed on through the Golgi body to other required places. So yeah, that's why it's given. Synthesized material by endoplasmic reticulum is getting packaged and sent through this uh, Golgi body. Right? And it is also meant for storage and formation of lysosome and cell secretion. It is meant for storage, formation of lysosome and cell secretion. Are you clear? Hmm? So this is for the Golgi body. What are details of? Can you say? What are dictyoso? Go through the function. Dictyoso as hmm. Can you think and tell me? We have learnt already last year. <coughs> dictyoso the Golgi body in the plant cell it is called dictyoso. Now, the Golgi apparatus first described by the scientist Camillo Golgi. And this Golgi apparatus consists of system of membrane bound vesicles. They are called flattened sac arranged approximately parallel to each other in stacks called cistern. That is why it is known as cistern. Stagna, the one below the other, the abicabula, cut abicabula. So it is cisterne. 
structure. This membrane is often have connection with membrane of endoplasmic reticulum and therefore constitute another portion of complex cellular membrane system. Okay. Then the material synthesized near endoplasmic reticulum is packaged and dispersed to various target, various targets now wherever it is required. Inside and outside the cell through Golgi apparatus. Right? Its functions include storage, modification, and packaging of products in vesicles. And in some cases, complex sugars may be made from simple sugars in Golgi apparatus. In some cases, complex sugars may be made from simple sugars in the Golgi apparatus and it is also involved in the formation of lysosome. <coughs> it is also involved in the formation of lysosome. So this is for the Golgi apparatus. Then second one, it is lysosome <coughs> where the membrane bound sac with the digestive enzymes prepared by rough endoplasmic reticulum, they are forming the lysosome. As such, lysosome ne, have a diagram of a total material. Lysosome actually, it is more or less a triangular structure. This is lysosome. Okay. And then, actually it is a waste disposal system and it is called the suicidal bag. It is known as suicidal bag. What does it mean? Whatever the cells, wherever the cells, whenever the cells get destroyed, it has to go and dump together somewhere. Is it not? So that dumping place is the lysosome. In a cell, whenever the cell gets worn out or repaired or sorry, worn out or damaged, it has to be thrown out in a place within the cell and that region, that place is the lysosome. That is why it is a suicidal bag. So membrane bound sac with the digestive enzymes made by rough endoplasmic reticulum. <coughs> and it is a waste disposal system. Another example for lysosome as uh, suicidal bag. For example, we have learned the uh, life cycle of frog. I hope you remember that. Let me get go. Frog undergoes metamorphosis. Now, last year, reproduction is in the particular. Hmm? Metamorphosis. In that, frog undergoes metamorphosis where it is formed of egg a series of changes as egg tadpole uh, and adult frog and that tadpole stage it is as external gill stage and internal gill stage Sorry. so now here in frog life cycle the uh, egg is developing into tadpole a small fish like and that tadpole will have gills for respiration because it lives in water okay? and then it is developing slowly the tail and forelimb. So at this external gill stage when it is further developing it is forming internal gill stage and during that time the development of forelimb and hind limb will start appearing and the tail will disappear. I hope you follow this. Huh? At the same time, we say this external gills disappear and then internal gills developing and when it becomes adult, that full tadpole is transformed into adult frog. Is it not? So where are these external gills, internal gill tails are all going, disappearing? It is taken by this lysosome of that cell present inside the tadpole. 
in present inside the frog otherwise we see so yeah hence it is called that was a suicidal bag i hope you understand huh? then one more this uh, lysosome it will undergo autophagy illa book la illa like paathukonga it undergoes autophagy abina nadu auto na self phage na lysis lysis yeah so normally when people undergo fasting yeah or people those who start due to poverty or no food available and then those who are doing fasting they don't take anything is it not they don't eat anything maybe a liquid portion they will eat is it not so at the same time the cells of the digestive system it is getting ready for digestion to receive the food is it not but when it is not doing so what happens to those uh, secreted cells uh, with the enzymes they are all getting worn out into the lysosome that is called autophagy are you clear yeah so this is for lysosome that we have lysosome that we have structurally lysosomes or membrane bound sacs filled with digestive enzymes and these enzymes are made by rough endoplasmic reticulum or function are there yeah the lysosomes are kind of waste disposal system of the cell they keep they help to keep the cell clean by digesting any foreign material as well as worn out tissues or worn out cell organelles i hope you are listening hmm? then foreign materials entering the cell such as bacteria or food as well as old organelles end up in the lysosomes sir yeah and then they they are broken into complex they they which break complex substances into simpler one and lysosomes are able to do this because they contain powerful digestive enzymes sir yeah so during the disturbance in cellular material when the cell gets damaged the lysosome may even burst and the enzyme digests their own cell hence it is called suicidal bag of the cell i hope you follow huh? so this is for the lysosome so yeah so it's ready to go through for the bar golgi apparatus and lysosome board load the go through for the 2 seconds in the lysosome okay the next one go through for our mission go through lysosome and golgi body both you have to next what is this mitochondria next one mitochondria what do we know mitochondria mitochondria singular mitochondria plural we are right o n and singular mitochondria na plural Okay. Now, first, mitochondria. Again, it is a cell organelle. Okay. And then it is first it is a cell organelle, and it is called powerhouse of the cell. It is called powerhouse of the cell. What does it mean? It generates ATP through the respiratory enzymes it generates atp are you clear 
Hmm? So I say mitochondria, it is the powerhouse of the cell and it called so because it generates ATP. Okay. Now, what is the structure of mitochondria? First, it is a membrane bound vesicle. Now, this membrane bound vesicle, outer layer is smooth in nature. This is outer membrane and this is inner membrane fold into, thrown into fold, called crystal. These are all thrown into folds called crystal. Okay? And then the inner part of the mitochondria, it is called mitochondrial matrix. As I said, the uh, chromosome, last uh, SNH video, nucleus, I love inner to that pedicle of the cytoplasm, the matrix. Okay? Same way, here also it is called matrix, mitochondrial matrix. I hope you understand this. Hmm? So, this mitochondria, powerhouse of the cell, formed of outer smooth layer, inner <coughs> layer thrown into crystal and then the cytoplasmic region of the mitochondria, it is called mitochondrial matrix. Okay. And this crystal, it is having a projection like this in their holdings. It has projections like this and this is called F1 particle. This is known as F1 particle where it receives the membranes of inner membranes of mitochondria. It has respiratory enzyme. So during respiration when it is getting or passed on to one layer to other, the <coughs> glucose is getting oxidized. That way energy is released. That way ATP is formed. So this ATP generation, it is called powerhouse of the cell. I hope you understand. Hmm? So mitochondria are known as powerhouse of the cell. And it has two membrane. Outer membrane is porous while inner membrane is deeply folded. And the folds increase the surface area for ATP generating chemical reactions and the respiratory enzymes. Okay. The energy required for various chemical activities needed for life is released by mitochondria in the form of ATP. ATP expansion, adenosine triphosphate. Okay. And it is known as energy currency of the cell. ATP is known as the energy currency of the cell. And the body uses energy stored in ATP for making new chemical compounds and for mechanical work. Okay. And then this mitochondria, we come across one more significant detail that it has its own ribosomes and DNA. This mitochondria has its own DNA and ribosomes so it can synthesize their own cell. So it is also known as semi-autonomous body. Semi-autonomous body. I hope you follow this. Eh? So I, I repeat, mitochondria, it is having its own ribosome and uh, DNA. So it is also known that it can synthesize their own uh, cell material. So it is known as semi-autonomous organ. Which one? Mitochondria. I hope you follow this. Eh? So this is for Golgi body or pityosome, lysosome and mitochondria. Right? We will continue. Next one has the 
plastics. Okay. So one more we will learn for plastics. So now what will you say? Who discovered uh, Golgi body? We will say Camillo Golgi discovered Golgi body. Camillo Golgi discovered Golgi body. What is the other name of Golgi body? Golgi body, sir. Golgi complex, Golgi parentis, and it is known as dictyosome plant cell. I repeat, it is. Golgi body, Golgi apparatus, Golgi complex, and it is known as dictyosome in plant cell. Right? Then what are sister name? What are sister name? Sister name? They are the flattened rod shaped sacs of the Golgi apparatus. They are known as sister name. Chure? And then the globular vesicles, they are also present in the Golgi body. So I repeat, Camilo Golgi discovered Golgi body and system of, it is a system of membrane bound vesicles and the flattened sacs are known as cisterne and then the material synthesized by endoplasmic reticulum. They are packed and dispatched through Golgi apparatus and it is meant for cell secretion, storage and formation of lysosome. We will just continue. Mm. We will continue. Next uh, cell organelle is the plastid. Next cell organelle is plastid. What do we know? Plastid ever? Yes. So now this plastic, it is of three types. One is chloroplast, second one chromoplast, <coughs> second one chromoplast and third one is the leucoplast. Plastics are of three kinds. One is chloroplast, second one chromoplast and third one is the leucoplast. What do we understand? Chloroplast. The same lesson in brief we have studied last year. We have to recollect that. Hmm? Now this chloroplast like that of mitochondria it is more or less oval in shape. Oval or elliptical in shape with the outer and inner membrane. Chloroplast, it is more or less oval or elliptical in shape. And inner to that is the <coughs> cytoplasm, it is called stroma. <coughs> we will go through panel. Inner to that is the cytoplasm called stroma. Recollect panel. Fine, sir. Now this stroma, it is further formed of lamellar structure like this. Stroma, it is formed of lamellar structure. So it is called stroma lamellae. <coughs> Lamella singular, lamellae plural. So it is known as stroma lamellae. Okay. Now this stroma lamellae, there are certain green patches present all over the stoma lamella like this. This is called grana. Now I say grana singular, grana plural. So yeah. Now this grana, they are nothing but concentrated chlorophyll pigments. Chloroplast is having the characteristic uh, feature of the green pigment as chlorophyll. And this chlorophyll is concentrated at certain regions and those regions are called grana. Grana singular, grana plural. Sorry. Now when these grana, when they are arranged like this, when the grana, they are arranged like this, 
like a pile of coin it is called thylakoid it is known as thylakoid in ellathukku picture presentation following this video we are going to have seriya so <coughs> This uh, thylakoid, when the stroma is piled up like a coin, it is known as thylakoid. And this is the most important, significant photosynthetic center. What does it mean? We say photosynthesis occurs in green leaf. Is it not? And that green leaf contains chlorophyll. So when the photosynthetic process begins, it starts somewhere. Is it not? That place is the thylakoid. So when sunlight falls on the leaf, the thylakoid gets excited. That is the chlorophyll pigment. It start functioning. Will start functioning. Okay? So that region is the thylakoid. So thylakoid is the photosynthetic center. I hope you follow this. Hmm? So I repeat. Chloroplast structure, it is a another cell organel found in the plant cell. Again, plastics are present only in plant cell, absent in animal cell. And plastics are of three types, chloroplast, bromoplast and lipoplast. I hope you follow. Hmm? And then this chloroplast structure having more or less oval or elliptical structure formed of stroma and grana. Stroma are the stroma together. What is the uh, matrix part of the chloroplast where it is formed of lamella structure. On the stroma lamella there are places where chlorophyll gets concentrated. Those regions are called grana. When this grana piled up like a coin, it is known as thylakoid. Okay? And this thylakoid is the photosynthetic center. What does it mean? When the light falls on the green leaf, we say the chlorophyll become, the chlorophyll will become excited. Sure? So this is for chloroplast. Then, like that of mitochondria, this chloroplast is also having this DNA and ribosome. So, this chloroplast is also known as semi-autonomous body. So, it can synthesize their own DNA. So, in a plant cell, chloroplast, are, um, chloroplast and mitochondria, they are known as semi autonomous body. Why so? Because of the presence of DNA and ribosomes. Sorry? And then one more, we find cell organelles within the cytoplasm. Is it not? But at the same time, this cell organelle, they are membrane bound vesicle cell. Okay. Whereas this ribosome, it is not having any membrane bound structure. Same time, it is included under cell organelle. So, the mem non membranous cell organelle is the ribosome. Yagoshiko, the non membranous ribosomes are getting attached to the endoplasmic reticulum. Another, it has no outer membrane. So, chloroplast structure is this. What is the function? It takes part in photosynthesis. Right? And this chlorophyll, it is present as <coughs> chlorophyll A, B, C, D and E. There are five types of chlorophyll. And all green plants will have chlorophyll and in that chlorophyll A and B are dominant in nature. And at the same time, as we have learned in 7 standard variegated leaf, in that a croton leaf, in that chlorophyll will be present and other color pigments are dominant. So in that case, will they do photosynthesis or not? 
they will prepare photosynthesis they will prepare food by the process photosynthesis as chlorophyll is hidden chaya so that is for chloroplast whereas this chromoplast on fruits and green vegetables and flowers they are having colored pigments yeah so they are known as chromoplast all fruits and vegetables and also the flowers they are having the colored pigment chromoplast and then leucoplast the colorless plastids they are called leucoplast say for example any the bean seed children yeah when you open it we find cotyledon inside is it not and what color will you say normally we say it is white apple we are eating yeah when apple is cut we find somewhat yellowish color children actually they are not of that yellow color or white color or color they are colorless leucoplast because the apple ni cut open mani achena it becomes brown in color yeah so they are colorless plastids so this colorless plastids they are called leucoplast <coughs> i hope you understand this <coughs> so plastids are present in yeah. only in plant cell there are two types of plastids which are go through one colored plastids are chloroplast and chromoplast okay chromoplast and leucoplast chromoplast containing pigment chlorophyll chloroplast and they are important for photosynthesis they are also containing various yellow or orange pigment in addition to chlorophyll <coughs> okay leucoplasts are primarily organelles in which starch oil and protein granules are stored so we say colorless plastids are called leucoplast okay so the internal organization numerous membrane layer stroma then they are similar to external structure of mitochondria they contain their own dna and ribosomes hence they are called <coughs> uh, autonomous body semi autonomous body i hope you follow this huh? the next one is vacuole <coughs> next one it is vacuole come on sir now the <coughs> plastics are present in plant cell and vacuoles are also present in plant cell this plastic sand pla uh, vacuole they are present only in plant cell and absent in animal cell okay so the structure of vacuole normally when we say this is a plant cell this is a plant cell okay and nucleus will be here and a large vacuole is present in the center this presence of large vacuole is the characteristic feature of <coughs> plant cell okay so now this vacuole the outer layer of the vacuole is known as tonoplast and in that to that it is not empty it is rich with the nutrients that is called cell cell this is the nature of the vacuole right in animal cell normally vacuoles are absent if present they are very very smaller in size okay so that is for vacuole a simple explanation <coughs> 
Vacuoles are storage sack for solid or liquid contents. Vacuoles are small size in animal. Animal cell while plant cells have large size vacuole. The central vacuole of some plant cell may occupy 50 to 90 percent by volume. Sure. Now in plant cells, vacuoles are full of cell sap and provide turgidity and rigidity to the cell. Turgidity na neti kena solike when the cell is full with the nutrients that is said to be turgidity. When it is shrunk, when the <coughs> when the protoplast is shrunken, then it is said to be flexible. Plasma is is perchonda neti ki that is so whenever you remember turgidity, then other opposite when they flexible. <coughs> Turgid and flexible. Okay. So many substances of importance in the life of plant cells are stored in vacuoles. These include amino acid. Now I say nutrients. They are amino acid, sugar, various organic acids and some proteins. In single cell organism like amoeba, food vacuole contains food items that the amoeba has consumed. Sure. And in some unicellular organisms, specialized vacuoles also play important role in expelling excess water and some waste from the cell. I hope you understand this. Huh? So this is for vacuole. Then the each cell does acquire its structure and ability to function because of the organization of its membrane and organelles in specific way. Thus, cell is the structural and functional organization and it helps to function as respiration, obtaining nutrition and <coughs> clearing waste material that processes excretion and forming new proteins. Okay, the cell is the fundamental and structural unit of living organisms. I hope you understood. Hmm? So this is for the <coughs> cell organelles. What are all we have seen? Cell organelles as first endoplasmic reticulum, ribosome, Golgi apparatus, lysosome, mitochondria, plastids and vacuole. Normally centrosome it is a very small structure found in animal cell, prominent in animal cell, but it is absent in plant cell if present or otherwise we say it appears only during the time of cell division. So, yeah. so now this cell division following this uh, <coughs> cell organel is the cell division that we will study in the next video session. So, this is for the cell structure and fundamental unit of life part 4 where you have learnt about cell organelles. I hope you understand. Hmm? Go through. Just go through this. Spelling for it. Diagram go through. Panna go through. Diagram go through. Just go through this plastics. You should know chloroplast, chromoplast, and leucoplast. Okay? Chloroplast, chromoplast, and Leucoplast. Just go through. This is us. <coughs> Plastics. And then you should know cell, well, sorry, chloroplast and uh, mitochondria. They are called semi autonomous body because semi autonomous organel because they have their own DNA and ribosome and they can synthesize. This is for cell okay. So we will continue in the next video session. With the following that is the following this video is the PowerPoint presentation with the pictures 
we'll just continue. We have a good day. Thank you.